Welcome back to Behavioral Finance and Fintech. I am Andy Kim, your Dr. Finance. And we've been going through how much of your uh, biomedical or biometric data, right, um, tells about your risk preferences. And especially we are interested in the testosterone, the male hormone that drives you to take sometimes excessive risk, right? And it has a lot to do with your masculinity over there, right? And then <clears throat> in corporate world, right? In a corporate world, it's about uh, risky decision making under uncertainty. So how much does it matter, right? Is our question. And in fintech side, why do we care about it? Because it has a lot to do with your know your client KYC aspect of it, right? Retail clients, you need to better understand more comprehensively. And also, if you are venture capitalist, all that you have about the information is the company's business model, as well as the CEO, the personal character and the trait itself. As you analyze um, Kakao Bank and try to write, write a recommendation, right? For that stock, you will realize, oh, it's a, such a short history. We don't know what the heck, right? Is going on with the company. Even worse, if you are a venture capitalist, right? In, when you invest your money, it could be billions of dollars, right? Putting into private companies that has only three years history or two years history, right? What do you know about that company? Well, business model, good. Everybody knows about the business model, but what more do you know? Well, the person, the CEO or the management, those guys, those characters, okay, traits, all those things, oh, only the rational uh, economic theory-based uh, understanding is good enough. If you believe so, you're not. <laughs> you're not, you know, uh, there yet. Um, everything matters, right? The soft skills. And then if you can quantify those things. Also, they're, uh, what is it? The masculinity versus not. That kind of things. If you can gauge that somehow. Using this kind of uh, alternative data, it will be much more helpful for you to manage your, the risk of your fund, right? I'm talking about the venture capital, right? And for insurance purposes as well. Understanding your clients better. Okay, that's why. So let's go. Um, talking about masculinity and testosterone, um, let me share my family experience about the Python encounter in, you know, in Singapore. Uh, I lived in Singapore for about five and a half years in uh, NTU, right, campus. They have housing for huge apartments for professors. And I was proudly living on their like 13th floor, top floor, right, of that apartment, Nanyang Heights, I still remember that. And in my second year, right, second year, September time, right, all of a sudden in 3 a.m. in the, uh, at night, right, 3 a.m. in the morning, uh, our maid, screamed like crazy ah! and then that woke up my wife and then she woke up and realized what was going on because uh it was uh you know our maid right encountered a python in the middle of our living area living room ah the thing is we have two daughters then it was like two years old and four years old little daughter sleeping there and then there was a python so my wife was like screaming like crazy and then started to beat my chest i mean i never knew what was happening because once i fall asleep even you know any bomb shell goes on blows off i don't care i just sleep <laughs> The only way to wake me up, up was just uh, beating my chest. And then she screamed at me saying four words. I remember that. I will remember that until I die. That is like, do something about it. Right? Do something about it. Ah, I was like a Korean words, right? Four letter words, Korean words, and four words in American. Uh, in English, right? I remember the, her desperate facial expression and then the voice. I felt so pain, so I, would, I could realize it is really truth. I mean, the reality, not the dream and a nightmare at all. 
I saw that snake, huge one, three meters long, right? Almost like a 10 feet length, right? And so I just immediately woke up and jumped out of the bed and screamed and yelled at that creature and then to fight against it for my family, to protect my wife and my daughters and my, you know, all the family, right? So, um, I thank God I was courageous enough, right? <laughs> um, with that, the python, right, sneaked into my bookcase and then thought it was like coiled, right? And then waiting out inside over there, right? So, that was not the end. Thing is, the thing is, we called up the police and then the five Singaporean policemen came in. And uh, unfortunately, they were not trained to catch the python, so they handed me over the python catching tools and say, "Here you are, sir. You do it yourself. DIY catching python." Oh my God! And I said, "You got the pistol over there in your pocket, over there, right? Shoot him and kill it." And then um, the policeman said, "No, this is endangered species." So I was like, "Don't you think my family is in danger too?" Huh? Uh, but it doesn't matter. They had to abide by the law. And then they were just separating um, our, my family from that python. Okay? Um, and then there came one campus security guy later on because I called up the campus security as well and yelling and then saying, like, we have a huge snake over here. And then that guy brought a, a chopstick kind of things and a small. <laughs> vinyl bag, plastic bag kind of things, believing that I was exaggerating too much. And then he realized that I was not exaggerating. And he said like, I'm sorry, la. Uh, yeah. That Singaporean you know, accent is like, I'm sorry, la. Okay, you should, right? And then he said one thing that I permanently will remember. He said, you are lucky. Ah. What do you mean? You are lucky. I was lucky? What do you mean? Because it could have been a black cobra. Oh my God, black cobra. Now what? <laughs> uh, no surprise actually, because um, Singapore is a tropical rainforest country, just a 100 kilometers away from the equator. Okay? So it's not about the country's development or anything. It is a super, you know, uh, well-developed in terms of economics and materialistic development over there, right? Rich country, GDP per capita is two times the, that of Korea, all right? Um, I'm not hurting their <laughs> reputation or in that kind of thing. So nothing to be shamed about, right? If you're anybody Singaporean is listening to my lecture, right? But it's naturally, quite natural to have those huge creatures, like the animals of the tropical rainforest. One of them, quite often showing up, turned out to be black cobra. I never knew that. And the thing is, I realized, oh my God, when my wife screamed at me and said, do something about it. If it were a black cobra, you know, right? Ah, and then the black cobra can spit their venom like five meters away. The target is there. They can shoot you directly in the eyes. I was like, ah, I could have gone, right? Um, so that's what the masculinity and taking risk is about. Okay, masculinity or testosterone, right? By the way, Harvard professor Jennifer Lerner, you must have watched that video, right? When you get angry, let's say your spouse beats you and then you get angry and then that anger explodes those testosterone inside you. And naturally, that, that was why I was driven to you know, go ahead and rah, do something about it with the snake, right? Um, that's the effect of testosterone, and then the consequence of it could be, what is it? It's like a jackpot or terrible, right? Uh, success versus brutal failure. It could happen that way. This is what the risk taking is about. And then it could have been, right, Python versus Black Cobra. Oh my God, right? That's one important lesson that I learned. And also, also, um, biologically and then how do you say the the uh, evolutionarily right over millions of years we must have experienced a similar situation when we are living in the caves like 10,000 years ago or something like that 
right? In our caves, in our uh, resident places, your wife or kids could have waken you, woken you up and say, well, do something about that bear or something, the snake over there. And the guys had to go ahead and do something about it. If the guy said what? Oh, this is, you know, here's, what is gender equity about? You go ahead and do something about it yourself, wife. And then if my wife, right, listen to that, what must have happened, right? She could have, I know that she's a courageous woman and then she's very powerful and capable of doing whatever, you know, for the, to, to protect her daughters, right? I know um, there could be two outcomes. One is, you know, a dangerous outcome that I don't want to imagine that, right? If she fails to, you know, in the fight against the snake, oh, I would really feel guilty about it. And then my socially, I would be like, dead right um even before socially dead i will be like ah, i will regret it right the other case is my wife successfully killing the snake right and then turning against turning around who is next she's gonna kill all right that's gonna be me right so that's why i <laughs> i have to do it right so that's when the nature calls right it's a moment of truth you have to go there right that's what guys you know exercise their muscles and get get trained right to fight against his enemies right um it could be animals it could be uh, other human beings that you have to fight against and things like that but that's what the testosterone is about right do something about it you could be successful you could be fail failing okay um so that's one thing I want to highlight. The motivation uh, uh, in my, you know, um, the facial masculinity of the CEOs was like this. Well, the CEO's uh, masculinity or the testosterone seemed to affect his uh, risk-taking behavior. And the thing was like, uh, you know, people have found out that those, you know, uh, guys with more uh, masculinity shown up in their faces deliver better performance in RO, in terms of ROA, that is return on asset. And then also the return on asset is like net income divided by total assets. For a given dollar of investment, this guy seemed to be delivering better, um, higher return um, in the short run, right? In an accounting sense. Um, and then subsequently other researchers found out Oh, well, previous finding is about the positive side of this, uh, you know, achievement drive by this uh, male, the, 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 what is that, the uh, masculinity. But it comes at a cost. It comes at a cost. It's a double-edged sword. Positive side is this. Negative side is that he may be taking excessive risk at the expense of accounting uh, transparency. As it turns out, they found that those uh, more masculine faced CEOs suffer more from accounting are, are, are found out to have more um, cosmetic accounting right so consequently they have to restate the accounting statements later on they have higher probability of doing that and then subsequent uh, papers find out that well after firing those CEOs with uh, um, accounting fraud right or um, restatement, mishappening, accounting mishappenings. They replace the CEOs, but the replacement CEOs, they tend to be less masculine faced the CEOs, okay? Seems like it is, I mean, these findings are based on the thousands of US CEOs, right? Using big data, okay? It's not about a couple of, you know, uh, like a 30 different CEOs un understanding or st studying like that. Small scale, no way, it's a big st scale ones, right? Now, uh, my, my, you know, uh, research idea was about, well, let's go into directly about the CEO of the company's uh, uh, risk, the stock return volatility. If the CEO, right, is more risk seeking, right, then the upper echelon theory will say that his risk taking pre behavior, risk preference will be reflected in the corporate decision making so that the risk stock price will be reflecting his risk preference so that the risk, the stock will be a lot more risky, okay? And then the managerial behavior, decision-making like M&As, it will be more frequent because M&As is a really risky business, 
uh, just like uh, what the uh, uh, Bain CEO told you before. And then <clears throat> the question becomes, how can we measure the CEO's masculinity? Well, fingers or other saliva or blood test, that could be the best. But I can't access that because I cannot meet those US CEOs. Would they ever bother to meet me? Okay, is a question. But there is, uh, there came an interesting way to bypass this one because now we have the facial uh, masculinity study like this, these group of studies, right? So the CEOs are celebrities and their face pictures are easily available in Google. Now facial masculinity, which is width to height ratio, okay, height, um, there's a debate going on. One research finding in Euro in the chronology um, is that the more uh, during your puberty, right, puberty, teenage days, when you get exposed more to testosterone hormone, then your bone growth happens in a sexually dimorphic ways um, so that you become more, your bones become more male, like male, right? And then one of the ways is like your cheekbone gets more prominent compared to your height over here. Um, more dosage of testosterone results in this. Um, that's one finding. But there is a debate about it, whether it is really happening that way or not. So the jury is still out. OK, but um, another thing is that the anthropologists, right, they use the facial width to height ratio as a way to classify whether the bone the found is from male or female. OK, um, and then subsequently, uh, researchers have been w working with this facial width to height ratio. Uh, to find out and then find out, found out more aggressive behavior of the guys with more, you know, uh, flatter face, like flatter face, like higher facial width, lower uh, height, okay, smaller height, which is flatter face. Okay. It's not about this. Okay. No, 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 no. It's not about the size of your whole face. It's about this part. It's feeling fatter, flatter. Okay. Versus not. Um, <clears throat> then people found out um, it's more positively, uh, significantly positively correlated with testosterone levels in adult males, and then uh, more masculine-faced males are more likely to do aggressive behaviors. Like in a ice hockey setting, you are you will end up with viola violences, and then end up in the uh, penalty area, okay, penalty boxes for a longer time. But the thing is, why do we put these kind of masculine face guys in the leadership position more often, often is a question. One is that these guys have a higher social status achievement drive, right? They, they have stronger drive to achieve social status no matter what, okay? Uh, as people recognize that that is a standard way of doing it over there and achieve over there, okay? Not a standard way, but there's a social ladder over there that I have to achieve that. I am the one who will go there, right? And it's, this is the achievement drive, okay? Wanna get some recognition as a chief guy. That's one part. Another part is that this kind of guys um, are more willing to, okay? Researchers found out that these kind of guys are more willing to, um, how do you say, sacrifice his own wealth to achieve the success of the whole group. My company, my school, my whatever, all right? Our company, our organization beating the other group, other country, other company, other school, right? I am more willing to sacrifice myself or my wealth um, for the success of our team. And some some uh, researcher, researchers found out in an experiment setting was so that in in, uh, in Saint Andrews University versus uh, um, University of uh, Edinburgh um, kind of competition setting, they gave this kind of competition uh, mindset to the uh, e experimentees or the, the 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 subjects of the experiment, the students in Saint Andrews, and said. Um, how much are you willing to sacrifice your wealth, the dollar that you got in this experiment? How much would you be willing to sacrifice it uh, to win the uh, the game of you know collecting a lot of money, right? Accumulating a lot of money. The more uh, money that you accumulate, um, then you are more likely to win the guys from the the team of the team of um, the Edinburgh, your rival school, right? 
And then the guys who said that they were willing to put their money and then fo uh, forget about picking their own, uh, taking care of the final wealth, right? Those guys were more flatter face. So they are more sacrificing leaders, right? Um, for their team, for the success of their team. Because their drive is to achieve social dominance, their team level um, as well. So that's why partially uh, we you know, usually have these kind of guys allow these guys to go to the top position. Um, typical masculine face is Mike Tyson that you see over here, right? The heavyweight boxing champion. The other side, the complete opposite, maybe, Justin Bieber, 1.83. Um, Fyodor, right? If you are familiar with this UFC, then this is the one, right? Similar to Mike Tyson. And then when it comes to management, business, Jack Ma, Ma Yun, right? Similar to this uh, Mike Tyson's facial width to height ratio, two times more, right? F uh, more wider face, wider face. So, um, what we did in our in our my research team was uh, uh, collect we collected you know those face pictures of the uh, U.S. CEOs publicly traded companies right 1500 biggest companies um, and then Google searched them and then we ended up with this unique male uh, more than 1,000 unique male CEOs pictures and then multiple RAs independently measured this width to height ratios. And whenever it was not like a, too much apart, of course, the facial width to height ratio uh, for the same person may vary depending on the angles and depending on the hand measurement, right? Um, but if it was too much of, apart, a third RA independently measured and all these kind of things. And then with the, uh, what is that, the evaluation score of the quality of the picture as well. Had to be in a high resolution as well, and then the facial expressions, and then the angles, and every kind of things, right? So that's what we did uh, to measure all these things. And then at some point, we um, input through it into the machine to generate the average picture of the CEOs. It looks like this. Average picture, face picture of the US CEOs looked like this. And on the way, okay, we developed our way to measure this facial width to height ratio automatically like this face recognition technology and then it automatically points uh, find out identifies uh, 68 different landmark points within a face with unique addresses one all the way down to 68 like this and then all that we need to do was to identify these two points these two points and take the average and then what's the length between these two and then over here what's the midpoint of these two 22 23 what's the point over here and then measure the distance over here and get the ratio like this okay that was it simple algorithm simple and then it works like this the advantage of doing this ai measurement is that we don't have a problem of trembling hands Okay. Previously, we were doing hand hand measuring, right? For this, but now we have our innovation was bringing the AI to measure this facial width to height ratio. Very simple one. And what we found out is the following pattern uh, that we're going to talk about. But here is what you can try as well. This is our website, FWHR measuring. Um, you can upload your uh, facial picture over there, face picture and then measure your masculinity, okay, over here. Um, reading Koreans is troublesome, you don't need to read it, over here. Browse your picture, and then upload your face picture over there. There I will say photos. And uh, let me upload my picture over here, upload. And then, and then later you will see, um, FWHR number popping up over here, okay? And then you can compare your measure, the, the FWHR number, with those of uh, US CEOs and Korean CEOs over here. Ah, yeah, bad gateway, bad computer. Why? I don't know. But we can try it again. Um, some... Yeah, 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 let me try this picture, yes, 
and then upload it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a 1.728. I can see that it is lower than, smaller than Korean CEOs. Thank God I'm not CEO. I'm a professor, right? I'm more feminine uh, faced than Korean ones, right? And then US based ones, it's a lot uh, less masculine, right? That you see, you can compare, right? So that's what you can compare and have some idea about the degree of risk seeking or status seeking, right? Your achievement drive, okay? Um, here on the horizontal axis, what you find, uh, what you see is the degree of facial masculinity. Number four is, I mean, it's a 25 percentile, 25, 25, 25 percent, like one fourth, one fourth, one fourth each, depending on the facial masculinity, most masculine one, and then least masculine ones, right? What you see, a clear pattern of uh, between the firm size and CEO's facial masculinity. And the firm size, I took the natural log of total assets, right? 총 자산, 자산 규모. And because this is highly right skewed, I needed to take the natural log of it to make the picture more comparable and then the intuitive, right? Um, so what you see is that more masculine faced CEOs tend to manage bigger firms, which is well known fact in the literature. And then ROA, this is also accounting performance, I told you. More masculine faced ones, better ROA, they, I mean, higher ROA they deliver. But the highest one, they are not that much. But the overall trend, you can see it over here. And the reason the exp exp uh, extremely high one guys over here could be attributable to this, the probability of accounting restatement. They come at the cost of driving more, you know, uncertainty coming from this accounting, cosmetic accounting problems and then subsequent troubles they bring, okay? So it's not good, okay? They sometimes do excessive risk taking, that's why, with accounting uh, in, on lack of transparency like this. Likelihood increases. And then um, these guys, what I find, what I find is that the more masculine faced guys, they are more risk seekers so that when they raise capital, they're more likely to borrow money from the banks or issue corporate uh, bonds like that. So that the leverage ratio tends to be higher. Okay. And then uh, acquisition propensity is also bigger because they want to become bigger guys in a short amount of time, right? The best way of doing it is acquiring other existing companies, right? That's what you see over here. Of course, over here, you see that it's a small, small broken, uh, breaking of the trend, but overall, you see the uh, positive trend, right? Let's see. And so what I find in that okay, research is that masculine face, the CEO seem to drive the firm more risky and then pursuing higher leverage. And then they are more acquisitive in terms of number of acquisitions and the dollar amount spent on acquisition as well. And then the, we also look at their compensation structure. They tend to have higher Vega compensation, which means like they have a lot of options going on in their compensation package. Higher Vega means like more your call option value increases more with more high volatility of your stock, right? So quite uh, intuitive result that your CEOs prefer to have uh, higher volatility returns in the stock, risk taking uh, the more mas masculine face the guy is, right? That's what we find. Why do we care, right? Um, CEOs masculinity seem to increase firm risk. And it is important uh, for option traders because the option traders, derivatives trading desk, what you care about is the volatility of the stock. And then it is important for your M&A advisors. M many of you want to become um, consultants in the future. A lot of the important part of the consultant's job is to advising M&As. Who are more interested in doing M&As? More masculine faced CEOs than feminine faced ones like me. Uh, important for private equity and venture capitalists, right? At certain point, you have to sell off your portfolio company to somebody else who are more likely to acquire that kind of companies. 
more masculine faced guys. And it also is important for fintech as well, assessing the risk preference of the retail investors for loan pricing and personal bankruptcy prediction. Who is more likely to load up more debt? More masculine phase than not. Okay. Debt capacity as well. Can he or she, you know, take care of this kind of level of debt, right? Um, it goes together with it. Um, ID photo analysis could be done. Also, Later, I'm going to talk to you about the vocal masculinity as well. That is, you know, there is no debate about that. Even though the facial masculinity, there is a debate about it. But the vocal masculinity is straight a result of testosterone. More lower pitched guys, high, uh, the higher risk preference, um, more risk seeking, right? That's obvious. And then there, your vocal ana voice analysis matters over there. And then it's important for pay consultant as well, right? If you're HR managers and then devising those pay packages to the CEOs, then you will care about this facial masculinity. Recently, uh, the research has been advanced even more, not just the facial masculinity, but the like, how do you say, likableness, right? Likeability of your face. Hogamsang, bihogamsang kind of things, right? They look at the CEOs, analyze the, digitally analyze the face pictures of the CFOs. And what do they do? Is University of Hong Kong's Kim Jong-bun Yosunim, the professor Kim Jong-bun, the big shot guy, right, over there. And they are the, studying the relation about, uh, they're studying the audit fees, right? Audit fees. The publicly traded companies, they have to pay audit fee to the uh, PwC kind of audit companies, auditing companies. And then the auditing companies, when they are doing their job, they have to, you know, they have to doubt everything about these uh, financial statements the companies provided. How much trustworthy is it, right? They have to pay attention to it. But at the front time, right, in front, right, before that, they meet the CFOs, right? The first impression of the CFOs could be likable versus not likable, more trustworthy looking versus less trustworthy looking. Um, what they find is that if the CFO looks more trustworthy looking, likable, then the audit fees they charge, the PwC charge or the big five, big four companies charge is smaller in their, the CFOs or the, the relations of initial couple of years, one year, two years, the audit fee is lower if your CFO is more <laughs> trustworthy looking. Um, but in the long run, market is efficient so that the audit fee goes back to original level, okay? So, oh, first impression is important. Yes, it is important only in the first year. In the long run, it does not matter. That's the beauty of this paper, okay? So uh, that's that for this part of the video. And then next video, we're gonna move down to comparing the neighbor versus cacao in terms of the founder's facial masculinity. Uh, so hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching.